Hey Britt, it's me, Shelly Hunter-Ash. How are you going? Uh, I just texted you and woke you up. I am so sorry. I am so frustrated at the moment by this little thing here. It's got a very bad spirit in it at the moment. And I don't like the spirit and I'm trying to get the spirit out. But the spirit keeps distracting me because it doesn't like positive uh, love and it doesn't like positive friendship. It doesn't like positive uh, um you know, readings or anything like that. It wants to basically play with my crystals and that. And I, I never minded the kitten I had playing with my crystals. But, like, I mean, if you look in this book, right? See, this book, Spiritual Guides. Okay. I am getting to your reading. Don't worry about it. I just need to get this out of my system. If you look under cat, right? It says here, Whew. It's most likely someone who is one of your spiritual guides trying to communicate with you. Being in a cat or a spirit can reside Cats in. Cats can very much hold spirits, uh, a few of them, inside themselves. And I know for a fact, I know the two spirits that are in there. And I've had problems with these spirits for the last, the whole life, basically. And I think God thinks it's funny putting the person that I hate the most. I don't hate because I don't hate anyone. I hate myself if I hate anyone. The person I dislike the most, which is uh, this spiritual rapist I've got inside the cat. And now every time I touch my cat, I'm getting touched by icky stuff. But anyway, what I was going to suggest to you before that, and I was going to suggest, and it only just came to me, but I was going to suggest to you before I started talk, putting you off cats by saying that spirits reside in them, is have you ever thought of getting a little kitten? Uh, I know you want a dog, but kittens are really good. They're more playful for dog than dogs, especially when you bond. When you bond with a cat, it's amazing. Unless someone rips that bond away, um, and I know for a fact there's a spirit around you who very really much appreciate be being able to reside in a kitten that you have. Oh, wow, I just got your confirmation that I can do your reading so I can start now, which is really, really good. Uh, as you know, I normally start with the hidden card, and I've also got a pendulum right here, just in case I need it. I have not used it as yet. Where did my onyx go, you stupid cat? Yeah, you know, I I love my kitten so much, and all morning I've had nothing. Sorry, I got boogers in my nose. I think, I think because I'm sick. Uh, all morning I have had problems setting up. I literally took you know I said I said like ages ago I'm only going to be half an hour, and I was going to do it started when you were asleep. I didn't mean to wake you up if I did. Um, anyway, I've been trying all morning just to set this little area. See this little area with ornaments and you know that's Goliath by the way. Yeah, Goliath, the tarot deck. I don't know if you saw. But anyway, I as I said, now that I've got your permission, we can start. Um, so grab a cup of tea. If you've got some incense, light some incense. If you have a candle, burn some candle. I don't know if you've written in your journal yet, but you've got to do that. There's a reason I tell people to write in journals. I have to do it myself, but I haven't got the mental capability at the moment since I've been beaten. I haven't been able to read or write since then. It's one of my brain injuries, unfortunately. Um, but needless to say, I hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoy this reading. And I'm going to put my heart and soul in it because this is about your third or fourth reading or I'm not sure. You had a lot of general readings because we did them like years apart and the last one, I cannot remember what I said to you, but I know it was something about moving forward and moving on. So I'm going to have a quick read of your questions and put them back into subconscious my mind, uh, back on my subco subconscious mind, um, your questions. Uh, I know it's really difficult questions that you asked, but let's see what the tarot cards okay, have to say. Okay, first of all, one of the questions you asked was, how do I know I'm making the right choice? I can answer that one without a tower reading, but I'm going to put it towards the cards and that. But first, I thought I'd do this. As you can see, you'll watch my hand and the pendulum. I will not be moving. I actually have to change hands. Hang on. Um, because if I don't change hands, I can't do it because that's my healing hand to the left and my power hand is actually my right. So I actually used to be left-handed, but I learned to write with my right-handed back then in when I was in school. Oh, my God, the kitten put a knot in my fucking thing. Sorry. Hang on. Slight technical, slight technical glitch. Hang on. I've got to fix the pendulum. Hang on. Sorry, I'm trying to get 
I'm having technical difficulties and I'm fighting my kitten who's been possessed again. So I I don't know how to explain what's happening in my life, girl. That makes me so jumpy like this and so aggressive towards my animal that I never used to be. This animal's not the same animal I had. The spirit in it's not the same spirit that I had in it when I left last night to go out. Now I've come home and someone thought it was very funny to put something that I find disgusting in there. So I can't even have my kitten to love anymore. And my kitten never did this. I did tarot readings and my kitten never did this. Anyway, I'll try again. Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting there. You know, as I was saying, there's those interruptions, right, that you kept having last time. You kept having your interruptions, like, yeah, by your mum. Yeah, so cruel. My kitten loves being in the cupboard anyway. I just shut the door on it in the cupboard just so I can do this pendulum readings with you. If it, a kitten sees a string and a crystal, it's going to want both. The kitten and cat love crystals. Dogs don't mind crystals, but they're more... Um, Anyway, without further ado, we're going to ask the crystal to show itself. We're going to ask the pendulum, what is yes? That is yes. Clockwise is yes. Stop, pendulum. What is no? Anti-clockwise is no. As you can see, I'm not moving my hand or anything. Stop crystal. Stop pendulum. What is undecided? Or I don't know. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you saw that, but it was going diagonal, it still is, even though I had to move my hand to get the recording done. Stop, Crystal. Please swing around. So crystals will always swing towards the positive answer first, rather than the negative answer, and then they'll show you the negative answer or the no in the, their swing. Now I'm going to say, Brit... The client that I have for today, who I work for in the highest possible light of her destiny, her fate, and her journey, wants to know is, is she making, one, the right choices? Two, is does she have to make different choices in life? So one, is she making the right choices right now? Yes or no? By the way, the answer was no, but I'll do it again. One, is she making the right choices? Yes or no? No. 
Stop, Crystal. Does she have to make huge changes to her life? Yes. Will the memories of Daniel and what happened between the two of them, which I don't need to have visions of, by the way, Crystal, ever be let go by Brit? No. Stop. Is this because she has yet to make a change to help that process? And the answer is... And for that last question, like, will it change when you make changes? And that answer of you not getting over what he's done, uh, it says if you make changes in your life, it says that you will eventually get over it. He said, yes, she will get over it. I don't know if you saw that last bit of that, yes. Um, my kitten's coming out now, so he just guaranteed that I'm going to get shitty. I don't know why I'm in the biggest, baddest mood with the guides and my angels at the moment because they always put this spiritual entity that rapes me into my things and I hate it like they put her in my bed they put her everywhere and you know I've I've had enough tests where sexuality and rape's concerned um and I hope to god nothing like that's ever happened to you uh, I got a feeling something bad did happen to you once upon a time, and that's what's made you wary about men in general. I don't think necessarily think it was Daniel, but Daniel did his own fair share of bruising and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, now to start the reading with the cards. As you know, I'm using the Al Goliath Tarot deck, and I still love this deck, like you wouldn't believe. And yes, it is the deck from the guy I stalked. I had to get a lawyer's permission to basically get this, and I had to do it in a sneaky way too. So I nearly got in trouble for that as well. And if my court had heard what I've done since then to the guy, I think I'd be locked up for a fucking 10 years or something and it's not even that bad I haven't even done anything that bad really it's just like a matter of he's in my space and I want him out of my space unless he, if he comes in my space I want to be cleared I want my name cleared I mean how hard is that yeah anyway I think that's what you need to you need your name cleared in some way that's why I brought up that story for some reason I don't know if you're framed or set up in some way. So for some reason, I feel like there was a betrayal around you and I was talking about it last time that, some, that someone was going to betray you and stuff. So if I was you, if that's actually happened and you got blamed for something, I don't know if it's court-wise or just like life-wise and upsetting in that way, I would honestly, if I was you, resolve it in your heart and let go of it. 
Um, as to the Daniel thing, I can give you advice at the end of the reading to that because I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the cards are going to take us today because there's too many interferences. And we had that last time we tried to do a reading for you because you're in it. You're sitting on the fence about a few things, and one minute you're going forward, and the next minute you're taking 10 steps back. And that's with me too. I felt like I was going forward with my business, my tarot readings, and all that, and then moving out. And you know, all of a sudden I look back, I'm still back at my parents' place, still facing the fucking same thing that I was facing before. So, as you can see, it's just a new test, a new day, and we will pass it this time, both of us. Anyway, I feel like you should I start. I think you should start to. Um maybe let go of some things and I can teach you on how to let go of all this sort of stuff. It's fear that makes us not let go because as long as we keep the memory of what other people have done to us or if they continue to do it to us, as long as that's in our life, we'll always stop living fully in our full potential and they basically win. Unfortunately, evil has the predecessing uh, rule at the moment because evil always gets eradicated by love. And that's all you've got to let into your life is that you've got to learn to love yourself and not accept those who diminish or criticize you or put you down or even hit you or even make you feel guilty about a decision that you make that might not necessarily include them. And yes, I'm speaking about Daniel and a few other Okay, now I'm going to start the tarot reading now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with your hidden subconscious desire or intent or destiny it's like your shadow card basically it's a it's a card where your unconsciousness is telling you this is what's been hidden from you for a while it might have been the same as what was hidden last time but in a different context or it might have moved forward it's another aspect but it'll have something to do that reflects with all your questions like am i making the right choices i don't want to fail so how do i do this and my simple thing is i've got a heart center um blog and it's a ritual that you do in your heart center and if you could open up your heart center and do this ritual which i can give you if you remind me to give you the blog um, if you could do this heart center blog, you can literally feel when your heart is telling you whether you're right or wrong in your decision. Anyway, if and I can, amazing. I'll talk about that more later. If not, just remind, please remind me, just send me a text one day. Don't be shy. You can interrupt my life at any time you want. I love you, girl. Um, but you're staunch. You're a really staunch chick. And I think that, you know, with your heart center, as I said, it feels like you get a heart attack. Or when you first open it up because it gets rid of all that pain and all that anger and all that fear and all that disability and, uh, emotions that stop you from moving forward in life. But after a while, the pain of the heart attack and all whatever pains or aches you get will go away and it would tell you when you're happy, it would tell you when you're sad, it would tell you when you're in love, it would tell you when your heart's broken, and you basically get to be ruled by this. Unfortunately, I'm a broken arrow at the moment, which means my heart's permanently broken until further notice, basically. And you don't want to end up like me, girl. You'd Sorry if I'm talking too fast or talking in riddles today, but most of this, as I said, just take whatever guidance comes to you and whatever escapes you, or elude you for why I've said it at the moment. Just sit on it. Maybe write down why did Cindy say this and maybe ask me. Or wait a couple of months, three weeks to three months to three years um, for basically an answer as to what I actually say about these cards. But now, anyway, back to your... What you don't really realise is that you are sitting on top of a mountain, right? You are that goat. And if you ever look, I think the goat's even got shoes on or something. <laughs> Looks like it's got shoes on that are flower petals or something. Anyway, you are sitting on this beautiful barren hill that is dusky and hidden by clouds. And you should be in your herd. You should be with some people your age. You should be somewhere... Uh, more sociably accepting, you've become like more than a hermit. You have 
head butted your way stubbornly to the top of the hill where you always said you wanted to live on the top of a hill of some country property. <laughs> now, that was my dad that said that, but I'm just trying to say, this is what the goat is saying. The goat wanted to be the king of the mountain, and that's what, or the queen of the mountain, and that's what he became. But it's a very, very lonely experience because... Goats are usually herd animals, which means they like to be in their herd. They don't necessarily like to be alone. There are lone wandering goats that wander off alone, and they're the ones that normally get into trouble and normally find a human, and that's why they end up in a human paddock or something like that. But the wild goats, they like to travel in the herd. And this goat is saying to me that everything's been barren, everything's been desolate. You've had some financial windfalls. You had some financial losses. You had some material stability and by material stability I mean you got your own place now um, but it's not exactly a bought home and you always said that you dreamt to own your own home one day and not rely on other people's home or well-being like you had to in the previous years that I knew you but unfortunately due to prob problematic acts of others you have closed off everyone and basically a living alone wondering what do you do next uh are you making the right choices uh one of those choices is whether you tell somebody something or you show somebody something the answer is yes you should show them even though it might hurt others it's definitely in your own best interest to show someone and I think if you look at this site, it's very barren, it's very cloudy, it's very misty. And even though you've got to shut the door, and like four basically means shut the door on past and letting go of past, it's basically telling you, you can either change right now and embrace the next card that I'm going to show you, which is your hidden destiny or shadow self, something that's a bit more major than destiny and fate itself, because destiny and fate is someone else deciding it for you, whereas uh, shadow self and that is something within you deciding it for you. So I really want you to think about what it is that you really want to change in your life, what it is that you want to succeed in, what it is that you want to uh, move forward with, what it is that you want to let go. And it always helps if you write all these things down. Now, the prudent mountain goat is very prudent. It's keeping all its cards close to its chest. It doesn't want to involve anyone in its new quest or its new adventure. It doesn't want to see its brothers, its sisters, its relatives, or its friends, or its peers, or its acquaintances. He just or she just wants to sit there. Oh, please don't cry, baby. I think I'm I think I'm sensing you crying. I don't know if it was you crying or someone else crying, but I can sense a, a breath in me that's crying. Anyway, in that, um, I think what you need to do is reach out to the right people. I've got to do the same. The fact that this has come up twice in two very close readings. I think it was the last reading I did Mary's. I don't think it was Ashley's. I think it was Mary's reading that I did that this has come up as well as the first card. And it's really funny because it was on the top of the deck and all of a sudden it was in the middle of the deck because I made sure I chose in the middle and towards the end of the deck, which is what I normally do with the subconscious by following the lead. Anyway, but anyway, the fact that this happened twice, I've also got to take note of this card that I've got to let go of past and move forward and make some changes into my life that I might not be Now to make for it. the subconscious card, finally. I'm going to turn the film around. And as you know, with the subconscious card, I never take the whole deck. I only take the bottom of the deck. I'm just going to take these. I already feel the card. Oh, one flicked out. You know, if one flicked out, I normally say that's it. But I'm going to actually choose two for your unconscious card today. Ba mainly because I felt a card that was really warm and needs to be addressed where you're concerned. And the second thing I did with your shadow self is, as you know, as I normally say to you, if it jumps out, it's meant to be used. All right? Even the cards jump out like that one did. Now, funnily enough, someone else got this 
Second card I'm going to show you in the reading before I show you the cho card I chose. This card was the one that jumped out, and it's the Four of Pentacles. Basically, and again, we've got to learn to make it, because if we don't learn to make it, how else are we going to move forward? Now, I just thought what I'd do is, like, as I said, it's all about letting go of past. You've reached a stage in your material life that you have to decide whether you want to go on a spiritual journey or continue with this material, physical journey and decide whether you want a spiritual love with a bit of physicality in it or if you want to have just a physical love that appreciates you first. Like, I was in my ex. He used to beat me up. He used to do everything. He molested and raped my daughter. I finally left him when I found that out. <coughs> And I kept getting the death card and all that sort of stuff. And I really had to learn that it wasn't my fault. And I really had to learn to move forward. And it was really hard. But that's not what I was going to say. I was just going to say that I had my ex to deal with. And I had to learn to shift out of that perspective and not let him affect me anymore. And I finally thought when he died last year, I'm never going to get beaten anymore. And just to test me, I've beaten up twice, as you know, afterwards. But the thing is, I never changed where he was concerned. I always sat there on one hand, believed my daughter, but on the other hand, I still needed him in a way. I needed some sort of male influence in my life to help guide me or to give me strength. And I think that's what you got to find in yourself too, the masculine side. And the fact that this is card has come up twice now in two separate readings, and I think it was the last reading that it came up in, just makes me aware that I should take note of what I'm saying. So maybe this part of the reading, you remind me, I have to read again. And look, it was so easy to go to Goliath's answer of the goat. I wonder if we can see if that's... I think it's shoes that he put on there. I wonder if anyone else noticed he put shoes on the fucking goat. It's a hoarding, it's selfish, it's unkind, it's possessive, it's controlling, it's a stubborn spirit. It's vain, it's obsession with material possessions, it's inflexible attitude, it's a resistance to change, that's one for you. It's one-sided, it's limited thinking, it's controlling your environment, having things only your way. But I feel that this is what was around you, not you in self, because if I read the next bit of it, you'll see it more resonates with you. But this warns you of what was around you that you don't want in your life. It's about keeping what you have and not letting go. It's about focusing on your share, being greedy. Sometimes we have to be greedy in life, don't you think? And you've never been greedy as far as I know. I mean, there's one or two couple of times I've seen you and I've wondered, go girl, you go and get that thing that you're after and you bloody power on and get it really well. Yeah, you know, don't let anyone stand in your way. And I'm saying that again. Declaring ownership of things, it's saving, it's wanting to be in charge. I think you have to be in charge of your life now and stop letting past dictate to you what what you do next and what you do with your life. I mean, you might be... I mean, I think you're getting bored with your life too. I find that I got very bored with my life lately. I'm, I'm looking at my artwork and I'm going, I really can't be bothered to do my artwork or my sewing, which is what I was going to do for the rest of my life. Anyway, that's something I have to think about. Uh, imposing structure onto others. Order in your own favour. Hanging or clinging onto someone. Denying weakness and insisting on doing things only your way. Now, do you think that has got anything that resonates with you at the moment? I think the only thing that really resonates with you, and it's really, really hard because this is where you are self-protecting yourself. So some of this stuff is because you're self-protecting yourself. But this is what I feel that you've been going through. A loss of emotional control. A need to deal with your financial insecurities and see where they've come from within you. Learn to share. That's one for me. Learn to share and give to others more, which you always do. So don't worry about that. So I think it's the opposite, that others have got to learn to share and give to you. Spend more time with others. Let more people into your world. I think that is very true of you as well, that you're going to have to let more people into your world. Like I was just working out the whole, I think we've known each other since 2013, 2014, probably 2014. And now it's 2019, girl. That's five years that we have not 
at least had a cup of coffee or a tea together. So maybe we should and just, you know, see how we go and see if we get along. Yeah, I know we get along, but see if, like, yeah, I'm not always so ramductious and so in your face as I tend to be in my videos. These videos are primarily there for me when I want to outlet to my therapy, my way of expressing myself without going psycho and killing someone sort of thing. So maybe you want to think about me with one of the new people that you hang around with and have a coffee with or something like that. Anyway, hang on. And I just want to say, they say it's not all bad and not everyone is going to hurt or use you. Just open your heart up a bit more. Pull back the curtains to the windows of your soul and the light back in again. You've been shrouded in darkness too long. And the four, and that's why it's called letting go of past. You've been letting past control who you've been associating with lately, which is not many people I heard. Oh, well, I felt, not heard. I heard from you guys, not any person that I know or any person that you know and I feel like that dandelion crowd has done to you what it did to me it spat you out and your boyfriend spat you out with it and the only way you're going to have closure with Daniel is if you write him a very long letter you don't have to send it to him but it'd be very good if you do explaining how he hurt you, how he undermined you, how he tried to control you, how he was always making you feel like you were second best no matter how much you did for him, how that you've lost the ability to love him in that special way but you'll always care for him as a friend because you always you had such <coughs> amazing and scary memories together. And even though he's changed and even though he's in jail, does not mean that you have to worship him or be there for him or see him again. I mean, seriously, you don't segregate yourself around this way. I know that you, you've been interested in someone lately, but you're a bit wary about going after them. I wouldn't go after them just yet. I'd stay single. Don't go in a relationship yet. Remember last time I said to you, don't go in a relationship, stay single. single. I know it sounds stupid. Because, you know, we, everyone wants love, everyone wants their relationship in. But you've got to work out your own shit. You've got to get off this mountain. And now what's crossing this? What's absolutely amazing to say that you're going to be blessed? I mean, most people look at meteor showers and think, Oh, no, the earth is doomed. I don't think about that. I think of it as the cosmic actually sending more creation and more light into our lives. If you think about it, lightning is bad enough to be struck by lightning. But if you're struck by a, a, a meteorite, well, you know, it's worse than lightning strikes. And lightning striking could be really good because some people survive lightning strike. They don't die and they get special gifts and special powers. And some other people s survive lightning strikes only to find romance and love. And this uh, eight of wands is like, see, pentacles is more the material world, the 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 financial world, the physical world, the common world, the society world. Uh, what we live in when we walk outside our own private sanctuary, our own private home. Now, wands is a bit different. Wands is all about creativity and festering your creativity self. It's got to do with relationships as well because it's all it's all connected to your sacral, which is underneath your belly button, and the sacral is color is orange. So you might find that you're very attracted to the color orange at the moment. Or you might find you're attracted to the colour blue, which is like love and wisdom or something like that. But I'm just saying, like, it's a very creative thing that ones are. And they often say that if you have relationship problems, you put on weight on your stomach. Like, I've still got weight on my stomach. I can never get rid of it because I've got major relationship problems all the time. Um, and if you've got... Uh, uh, um, un un unexpressed creativity inside you, you will end up having like stronger period pains, stronger backache, you'll have a lot of nausea where you feel like you're being rejected a lot um, and you're basically rejecting your own self. Now the eight of wands, eight means totality. You've come to a completeness of your experience that you've had in the past. You can go no further at the moment 
than this on this path that you have been on. So it's really time to change your path. I mean, you think about it, this is a darkened sky that's lit up by these meteorites, which you, most people would see as a curse, which will destroy the land and create fire and create, you know, think I say it as a sign from God that you're on the right path. Each one of those meteorites will be representing a creative idea that you've had in the path that, past that you started, but then because of other people belittling you, criticizing you, or you thinking you're not good enough, or you thinking it's not special enough, has ended up with you basically stopping what you're doing and stopping going forward and stopping having that experience. So it's time totally. to basically put everything that you've had in past away forget about it if you can't let it go and it's going to resurrect every now and then fine it'll eventually go and dwindle away from you you just got to take steps like meditation you got to take uh, maybe a, a ritual where you visualize writing down what you want to let go then going and getting a plate and putting foil on it, burning the paper that you wrote down and then burying it in earth and putting a crystal with it. And like you can dig up the crystal later and you'll probably find that the paper itself is dissolved and and um, crystallized and metamorphosed into a new way of life. And if you look at your life when you go and dig up that crystal again, which could be in a month or three months or whenever you feel justified to do that, you'll find that, you know, Things are very, very different with your thinking to what it is now. That's why I say it's so important to do your journal writing because if you do your journal writing and if you write things like, you know, while you're listening to me, you should be writing things down, little points that I say or writing things in your mind or see where your mind drifts off where mind, what I said and think, oh, what did she say then? I was thinking about this. Well, write that thought that you were thinking about down because it's important why I interrupted it and look at what I said beforehand and see why it triggered that thought. And maybe it's time to put a lot of it to rest. I found that I I have not gotten over uh, how I've been treated in the past, my past life. And it's still the same way I get treated now. And it is shocking the way people basically treat me. And I think you have to learn that you cannot go on with being treated the way or treating yourself as a subservient sort of human to yourself you have to follow your dreams you must be so sick of what you're going through right now and so sick of your life right now and I can tell that you are you're not happy with yourself in any way and don't please yeah we'll take a break in a minute we're going to make a tea and maybe get some tissues and get some things but you have not been happy with yourself I yes I have noticed you put on a little bit of weight but honey when I turned 30 I put on more weight than you did I don't know if you remembered me when you first met me I was like uh, I lost 28 and I reckon I lost another 8 kilos on top of that. So I've lost about 34, maybe 36 kilos in like 2 or 3 years since you've known me. And the weight will drop off once you're satisfied with yourself. See, the weight is the comfort for you at the moment. It's comfort for your pain. The pain is what resonates with you at the moment. And when you let go of the pain and when you let go of the experiences, the weight will ease off and you'll slowly go back into a more comfortable, happier self. Does that make sense? I hope it does because I didn't mean to bring up the weight issues. My daughter's got the same issues. So she can't get over certain things that happened to her in childhood and teenagehood. And she's stacked on the pounds. She's actually on medication from the doctors. And I keep telling her, change your medication. Go on a bilifier because it's an antipsychotic. And it also is a mood stabilizer and it helps suppress the appetite. But she won't listen to me because mummy's always wrong at the moment. I do make a lot of wrong decisions. But in my wrong decisions, I learn a lot. And I don't think it's the wrong decisions. I don't think we can ever make a wrong decision or ever fail. Because what you got to realize, there is no failure in life. There's only learning curves. You can only learn from them. And if you learn from it, then you haven't failed, have you? Like my parents used to say to me, oh my God, you used to do the violin, you used to do guitar, you used to do singing lessons, you used to do dance lessons, you used to do gymnastics, you used to do swimming, you used to do tennis. When are you going to decide what you want to do? 
And I'm like, you, you failed everything. You failed it. I didn't fail the subject in a whole, but they're saying you never stick to one thing. You always change, you always change. But sometimes change is good. And I had to find my niche in life because most of those things that I chose in life was other people's choices for me. So you got to see where other people's choices have come into your life too. But by getting back to this eight of wands, you had a total of an experience of where you are creativity wise, where you are, you've had some really good eye, good ideas recently of starting maybe a little legit business and everything like that. You know what, girl? This is a blessing for you. It is saying, yes, it's time to end what you used to do and time to start doing something new. It's time to throw it. I mean, it doesn't mean you've got to let go of everything you used to do. There's some things that will always be a part of you. Like I'm a self-medicator, so I'm always going to have that in my life. Um, another thing that's always going to be a part of me is the way I react to certain things until someone teaches me differently about people and the way they react to me. Um, I know she's very shy as well. And I feel like I'm very shy. Not many people realise that. I'm very shy and I tend to... Um, I tend to, like, you know, use gear and stuff like that to be able to talk to people. But after a while, it doesn't work, especially if I'm in one of my moods where I just cannot fight the depressive feelings and the weight of pressure that I have on my shoulders. And that's what another thing I feel like you've got too many burdens on you at the moment. Too many people are pushing you to do what they suggest and not letting you think, okay, that's a good suggestion. But I want to do something similar to that, or I don't want to do that at all. They're not giving you a time to voice your opinion. Too many people are going, what are you going to do with your life, Brit? You know, you're getting older here. When are you going to have babies? When are you going to settle down? You might not settle down to your late 30s. You might not settle down until you find the best person for you. Because why rush into another relationship when you can't let go of the guilt of the last relationship? When you've got nothing to feel guilty of. And why do you fucking feel guilty about what you do in your own personal space and your own spare time? Why should Daniel or anyone else question what you do with your time when you are by yourself in your room? If anyone affects that space, well, you can, you should be able to be say, this is my sanctuary, this is my bedroom, or this is my house, get the fuck out, if you don't respect me. And you need a lot more respect in your life for yourself, that you got to give yourself. And as I said, don't fucking, you know, write a letter to Daniel, deciding whether you are going to continue the way you are, because if he's affecting you by what he's done in past, I'm telling you, the minute he comes out of jail, he'll fall straight back into the same scene. I don't care what they say. I'm sober now. I'm going to be good. They say that while they're in jail when they got nothing. Yeah, it's easy to say that. But once you're out there, I remember every mental hospital experience I had, the minute I stepped back out, I just went and continued what I was doing before I got put in there. Simple as that because I had not finished that journey. I had not found out what I needed. I had not found out my limits. I had not found out my, um, you know, where I had to stop and change, you know. And then I worked out all the changes I made in the last six years since I lost my kid, custody of my kids were the best thing for me. You might say that you want kids because you'd be a really good mother on that, but I'd wait on that matter if I was you. All right, so this is moving forward fast, this card, Goliath says. A rushing of energy, clear intentions being made, things being made in the air and not yet landing. Good positive news is on its way. Great opportunities getting on with things, tra taking advantage of a good time, striking now while the iron is red hot. So if you've got something in mind to do with your life, fucking do it, girl. It's a yes, it's a definite yes. A situation requiring a huge surge of energy. You're going to have to put all your energy behind this project. I'm sensing your project now. It's a really good one. All things just suddenly coming together at once. The finisher of a major project strongly advised, putting new plans into action and motion and rushing into a new para paradigm. I don't even know how to say that word. Paradig. Mm. I'll show you what the word is. If I can get it. This writing's too small. You can't have it. There you go. Paradigm. <laughs> I have trouble with that word, so I always avoid it. Basically, rushing into a new 
way of life, which is why I was saying maybe you want to go on a spiritual journey from now on. Things are finally, like, you know, it's where you can go back and recess things, and that's what you've been doing in the past four or five months, ever since your last tarot reading, which was only three months ago, was it? I can't remember how long ago your last tarot reading was. It was either three months or two months or two and a half months ago, maybe even four months ago. I think you've got to reevaluate yourself before pushing yourself forward. Take a rest, at, you know, take a rest from all the bullshit of life. My little kitty cat that has to be in the way. Come on, little boy. Out of the way. And another thing you got to realize, as I said, this is such a blessing card because it's the total end of, you know, an old relationship. It's the, it's the beginning of a relationship, whether it be business, a person. And I sense a very dark-haired man with light-colored eyes around you or dark-haired man, where I say brownish. And I also sense a very light-haired, coloured man who is slightly younger than you that is going to be a messenger. Both of them are going to be messengers and very important to you in the future. There's also a woman around you that I keep saying, watch out for those claws, girl. And she's back in your life, whoever she is. Or maybe she, there's a lady in your life or someone in your life that reminds me of someone that used to claw at you and backstab you all the time. Anyway, that was your hidden aspect, and I've taken a lot of your time with the hidden aspect. So what I might do is I might do only three or four cards for your main reading, because we have gone on to half an hour just on that alone with the pendulum reading. And I don't care about time. It's just that too much information is too much overload. So I'm suggesting for right now, we take a break, take a deep breath, say wah really angrily, W-A-H, wah, and then say it calmly and with love, wah, and then you can feel the harmony going through your feet, your toes, your head, your fingers, and just keep saying wah, and get yourself another cup of tea, light another incense or candle, and I'll be right back. Anyway, now for your main reading, gorgeous. Uh, I'm going to put the view on the other way. And I'm going to shuffle the deck. And please do not look at what I look like. See, I want my eyes to be this colour instead of the colour that they are. I reckon I look really good with hazel eyes. Not blue, not green. Just a hazily brown eyes. And I did have, like, light coloured eyes a long time ago. But as my spirit darkened and my hair darkened from blonde and all that sort of stuff, because apparently my mum said I was blonde when I was born, but who, know, who knows? They all bullshit to me these days anyway. But anyway, I wish I had different colour eyes. We all wish we had something different, don't we? But anyway, I've got a dimple. <laughs> no one notices it, but I do have a dimple. Anyway, I don't know why I told you that. Maybe because appearance and how we feel inside is so important to our spiritual growth and what i was trying to say that i kept neglecting before you, you might, might want to basically look at spirituality and spiritual mastery and i've always said it to you i always saw you more like a high priestess someone on a 
solidary journey into studying a cult doesn't mean you don't have sex doesn't mean you don't get married eventually it just means you dedicate yourself to the occult you dedicate yourself to the higher self of yourself and i can teach you ways of like meeting yourself and meeting all this sort of thing uh meeting your higher self meeting your lower self meeting your shadow self i mean you had a glimpse of your shadow self through those cards your shadow self is your unconscious self your self that not necessarily would do what your light self would do your light self is what you do in the common society in front of law in front of in front of authority in front of your parents in front of your, you know the people that have you the right feel. to judge you and shit which they constantly don't but you might want to look at spiritual journeys and stuff like that unfortunately i had this beautiful book that i would love to have given you to read all right and unfortunately, I gave it to someone else, and I'm never going to get that book back again because I said to them, I want it back because I have to give it to the next person. But obviously, that book's gone. So I'm just seeing if I've got that other book that I thought might be good for you to look at here or if it's packed away. No, it's packed away. It's packed away. But it's called Opening to Channel. Or Arcs Your Angels. They're the two books that I was going to introduce you to. And it teaches you how to channel and how to dabble. Because even though Ashley's always been the one. Anyway, as I say, it was always Ashley that came across as to me as the person that was in. She always came up quite honestly and said, oh, I've got tarot cards. Oh, I've got oracle cards. What do you think of them? And I said, they're fine. They're not for me, but they're good for you for, the, for your journey for right now. You might actually want to look at getting not tarot deck because tarot is different. Tarot, you need to be, you need to tune your psychic awareness. But you might want to look at getting some oracle decks or some positive affirmation decks. Uh, the Louise Hayes ones are really good because they're about healing your emotional balance, which helps heal your physical illness. Because I think you got diagnosed or you had an illness recently, the last few months that you may not have been aware of previously or that happened maybe straight after Daniel went to jail or something like it was like a whole it was a health issue where you were concerned and that the Louise Hay stuff is always good because you know you yeah, get away, away from, from the, the emotional, emotional burden and I think inside you had this inner desire to get into the occult and such um but hesitated because of fear and you allow fear to control you a lot because we have a reaction, fight or fight, flight or fight. We either flee a situation or we fight a situation. Uh, there's no two ways about it. It doesn't mean we fight a person. It just means we fight the situation that they create. And we fight ourselves a lot. And I think you said, I, I would like, if I got to choose a goddess... I'd choose Ashley if it would be the goddess. And if I had to choose a high priestess that studied the occult and there was a doctrine of higher learning, I would actually choose you, Brit, because she's very good at rounding up people, gathering people, creating festivities, inspiring people. You are too, but you're on a more solitary you're on a journey. More solitary than, journey than, say, I mean, you could see by the mountain goat. In your subconscious mind, you are hiding from people. You are not wanting to go out and express yourself to people. And I think the best way for you to express yourself is to write people long letters of how you felt about what they did to you. And trust me, I'm going to be doing that very shortly. I've started it with my children. I started doing a letter to my children. I actually made a little book out of it, you know, put videos in there and put music. In. I haven't put music. I just put videos and stuff like that in it and made a little book. Um, so you might want to do that yourself. Right, first, write some letters to those that greatly, profoundly affected your life in a negative way. Then write some letters to those that affected your life in a positive way. And then forget about it. Keep the letters. Put them in a box. Tie a ribbon around the box. And when you're really ready to let go, burn, burn a candle. Can and then basically what you do after that is you wait three months, three three months, three weeks, more than three weeks, I say three months to three years, you find that box in the most unbelievably spiritual way and then trust me, you're like following signs and all of a sudden you come across the box and you go, oh my God, I haven't seen that in ages. 
It's happened to me quite a few times. So it's almost like the box, goes, box or whatever goes missing for a little while. Then I want you to cut the ribbon, have a read through the letters and see if you want to post it to people or if you have posted it to them. Congratulations for being ba- brave enough to post it to them. And then basically see if you moved on. And if you have moved on, you keep cutting that ribbon, you know what I mean? And bear, and then just burn the letters and bury them and do that crystal thing like I told you to. But if you have not moved on, read where you've changed. Read where you've changed and where you haven't and make those changes desperately. So you might want to do it in three months. I think three to six months is a good time to actually unlock that box where you write all your letters. And whether you send those letters to me. I mean, it might be a letter to me saying, oh, Cindy... Uh, you amazed me uh, with what you said in my insights, but where your life is concerned, you're really crap at making decisions. <laughs> yes, I am. That's why you're told every day. But you kind of wonder that. Yes, there is no wrong. There is no mistakes. There is no failure, girl. As I was trying to point out to you before, I've got so much to say to you for some reason, and so much of it has got nothing to do with the cards so far. So without further ado... I think what I'm going to do is pause my own breath, pause my own thought wave because I I, I told you I've got a lot of information to give you. Another thing I want to point across to you for Jody, uh, Ashley's mum and Ashley and yourself, you all got this creativity. Well, Jody has to work with her hands. Ashley's already worked with her hands. And you work with your hands. Like that little box that you gave me is gorgeous. Those lighters that you used to give me with the, like, you know, they're great little gifts. And what you could do is make a box like you made me. Put a little bit of soap. Make your own soap. Make your own candle. Could be a joint effort between the three of you. And you have, like, a little gift box. And you can sell those gift boxes. Put, like, cellophane wrap on it. And you can sell those gift boxes. You could, I mean, you're very creative and you never tune to it. Don't look at my art. My art's just out there. But do your own sort of art that will help you release all that creativity that I find in that card right there. You know, the meteor, 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 Me- right. Anyway, <laughs> I'm having a hard time saying it. Without further ado... Let's get to the second part of your reading, the conscious, the answer to your questions. And you know how you have to make those changes? Follow your heart. Open that heart center that I was telling you. Get that fucking blog off me, girl, or I'll put it up. Another thing you might want to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel. How fucking vain am I saying that to you? But on it, I'll be putting a lot of occult sort of related blogs and stuff like that. Instead of doing those handbooks that I was doing, I thought it was easy to do a web series and make it a video that way. And if anyone wanted a hard copy of the blogs and all that sort of stuff I read, they're quite welcome to ask me. Unfortunately for you, there's no charge, no charge when you ask me for a blog. But anyone in your friend circle, if they want to read or have a reading diet by me or, you know, whatever. Even get a blog or, or something to understand where you're coming from when you're teaching them and I'm teaching them sort of thing or whatever it is, they have to pay $5 per blog. Simple as that. Actually, you, Jody, none of that, none of you, none of you pay, all right? It's simple as that, okay? It's my gift to you for all the gifts that you've given me. Like, you know those little gifts you give me? I treasure them. I still got... I still got the uh, peacock that you, the blue peacock that you've got. I still got that uh, tiling mosaic thing. And I've got my new one. <laughs> I still got them all. Unfortunately, the other ones are in storage. But I had them up in, like, you know, in my last house that I was living in. True, I did. Anyway, now for the rest of your tarot reading. You got your tea, you got your light, your candle, if you lit your incense. Even get a Let's blog continue. or something to understand where you're coming from when you're teaching them and I'm teaching them sort of thing or whatever it is, they have to pay $5 per blog. Simple as that. Ashley, you, Jody, none of that, none of you, none of you pay, all right? It's simple as that, okay? It's my gift to you for all the gifts that you've given me. Like, you know those little gifts you give me? I treasure them. I still got... I still got the uh, peacock that you, the blue peacock that you've got. I still got that uh, tiling mosaic thing. And I've got my new one. <laughs> I still got them all. Unfortunately, the other ones are in storage. But I had them up in, like, you know, in my last house that I was living in. True, I did. Anyway, 
Now for the rest of your tarot reading. You got your tea, you got your light, your candle, if you lit your incense. Even good. get a Let's blog continue. or something to understand where you're coming from and you're teaching them and I'm teaching them sort of thing or whatever it is, they have to pay $5 per blog. Simple as that. Ashley, you, Jody, none of that, none of you, none of you pay. All right? It's simple as that. Okay? It's my gift to you for all the gifts that you've given me. Like, you know those little gifts you give me? I treasure them. I still got... I still got the uh, peacock that you, the blue peacock that you've got. I still got that uh, tiling mosaic thing. And I've got my new one. <laughs> I still got them all. Unfortunately, the other ones are in storage. But I had them up in like, you know, in my last house that I was living in. True, I did. Anyway, now for the rest of your tarot reading. You got your tea, you got your light, your candle. If you lit your incense... Even get a Let's blog continue. or something to understand where you're coming from and you're teaching them and I'm teaching them sort of thing or whatever it is, they have to pay $5 per blog. Simple as that. Ashley, you, Jody, none of that, none of you, none of you pay, all right? It's simple as that, okay? It's my gift to you for all the gifts that you've given me. Like, you know those little gifts you give me? I treasure them. I still got... I still got the uh, peacock that you, the blue peacock that you've got. I still got that uh, tiling mosaic thing. And I've got my new one. <laughs> I still got them all. Unfortunately, the other ones are in storage. But I had them up in like, you know, in my last house that I was living in. True, I did. Anyway, now for the rest of your tarot reading. You got your tea, you got your light, your candle. If you lit your incense, good. Let's continue. Anyway. I got interrupted by my own guides, and oh my god, I look shocking now. I look better on Snapchat. I wish I could do this part on Snapchat, but I can't because, you know, and I wish they had filters on iPhone cameras. Do they have filters on Samsung? It's like, I know you can do it after the effect, but who wants to do it after the effect? You want to look good when you're actually doing it. I have to put my, renew my lipstick too, by the way. <laughs> anyway. Do you know it's not my birthday? Do you like? Would you like you and Ashley and Jody like to celebrate my birthday with me? Because no one else is celebrating it with me. It's the seventh of April, which is like literally next Monday or Tuesday or something. It's next Monday or Tuesday. So if you're free on next Monday or Tuesday, would you like to celebrate my birthday with me? I'm serious. Just ask Ashley and ask Jody as well, or just Ashley, whatever you, whatever you think. Just the three of us, or. Just, you know, the four of us, you know. Uh, we can, you know, then it doesn't have to be at your place. It doesn't have to, you know, be anywhere special. It can be, like, you know, at a pokies venue or whatever. I won't have any money by then anyway. <laughs> don't have to buy me anything. Don't have, I just your presence and your company. I might actually extend that inv invitation to Ashley and that personally myself. Because I've never really spent any time outside the circle of, you know, what we do together, our business transactions. And um, and I love our business transactions. They make my life a bit hell of a lot easier. And I'm sorry I don't come to you all the time, but sometimes I get caught up in a world of driving and all that sort of shit, as you know. Well, not anymore. Although I'm meeting a lot of people on Scout these days that have been helping me out and stuff. Um, but anyway, back to your cards. Just think about my birthday next week, the 7th of April. I got no one to celebrate it with because no one wants to celebrate with me. Again, that's how it happened to me last year. And I met Janice and got close with Janice that night. And I believe she was my friend for a year until she stole my fucking car. Hopefully I get my car back by then because otherwise I'm stuck doing nothing. Definitely don't want to be here on my birthday. Cosmos! Mummy is not ready to play yet. You wait and be a good boy and go to your bed. Go on, your bed. Go on! Your bed. Quick. Quicker. Cosmos. Well, that worked because it's my cat again. He was just trying to tell me he's back without that. Oh, now the icky spirit's back with it. I didn't have much luck. I've got to explain to you about cats. Cats, if you look into their eyes long enough, if they allow you to, you can see into different dimensions and different worlds through their eyes. I'll take you across the border of all different dimensions and planes and that i've seen it myself not necessarily through a cat's eyes but you know through my own eyes you know my own eyes and eyes and stuff cats are amazing that's why they, they mainly say cats are familiars to witches and stuff like that so that's what i thought to you i thought to myself you might want a kitten yourself like i don't know if you can have animals or pets in your apartment but, like, they can't say no to a fucking kitten that's, like, trained on a litter box and stuff like that. And even if they do, there's ways of hiding it. Like, you know, 
I used to take my dogs to my parents' place and on every inspection. <laughs> I'd always forget one toy. Oh my! And then eventually I thought, oh fuck this! I'm just gonna, you know, six months after the kitten had been there or the dog. Well, my, in my case, dogs. Uh, I would say, oh listen, um, I've got a dog. Uh, it's my parents' dog, and unfortunately my parents can't look after it anymore, and they don't want to give it away. And it's an older dog, so it was an older dog, or it's a puppy, and I didn't really want it, but my parents thought, you know, I could do with some company and some protection. You know, it works. It works. I always waited till it was like they were at least six six months old and tra trained and all the rest of it before I dobbed in that I had dogs in rental places. But I was thinking more of a cat for you, and it will go really well with your journey. Because I don't know, have you got cats or kittens before? I'm, thinking, I'm pretty sure you had a cat before. They look pretty similar to my cat, actually. Black and white? Or am I just tripping? I might be tripping. I might be just seeing things because my kittens are overwhelming me. Now, that was four minutes of rambling bullshit, and I still haven't got to the bloody cards. Are you ready? <laughs> now I'm down, I'm doing it. I'm shuffling. Every day I'm shuffling. <laughs> you might just be wondering, you must be sitting at home right now going, oh my god, it's been like an hour or two, because I don't know how long it's been. It's been a while. So I might have to do this video, like, I only had like 14 minutes left of Ashley's, and I had to do hers in two parts, because, you know, Splice wouldn't, ex uh, wouldn't export a movie more than two hours long, or one hour and 45 minutes long, to be precise. <laughs> And Splice is where I do all my video editing and stuff. I've got various video editing programs. I've got harder ones. I've got ones that are more detailed and more full on. But I like Splice. It's quick and easy for tarot readings. And if I want to get more serious into this, I'll, I'll study more video programs and stuff like that afterwards. And I'm shuffling the deck. And on the back of my mind, I've been thinking about your questions about... You know, where am I going in my life? What directions do I have to change? I don't want to fail. Uh... Will I ever get over Daniel? Well, your answers were basically everything I said in the previous reading, which is not the previous reading, like what I said previously in this reading. And now I'm going to split the deck. And I might be a bit tricky because I know you're dying to know if I finished tarot re your tarot reading. I'm going to take a second to show you that. Right, and I'm going to take a photo of it in a minute. And I'm going to send it to you and say left or right, and see if you respond. And if you don't respond in the next two minutes, I'll choose one for you. Hang on. 